Snow Tracks is sponsored by ski -Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha Conquer Snow. And by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. Anybody who doesn't think 2017 is a big year for the snowmobile industry needs to unwrap their arms from whatever tree they've been hugging and get on the Google to get themselves some real facts. This season, snowmobile buyers are greeted with a juicy pile of new iron that truly encapsulates the saying, something for everyone. Whether you're an average trail rider, big horsepower fanatic, aggressive ditch banger, or just want something that handles like it's on rails, you have a new model to consider in 2017. Two of the most exciting new models are, of course, the two that claim the biggest horsepower numbers. They are Skidoo's G4850 and Yamaha's Sidewinder. And before you even have a chance to ask, we're gonna answer the question that's already in your head. Which one is better? Or maybe more specifically, how are they different and what are their strengths and weaknesses? That one makes more sense in my opinion. So let's just jump right into this query with some background info on what these two vehicles are made of. Yamaha's new Sidewinder follows the same pattern as all of their newest and greatest models over the past few seasons. It was co-developed in partnership with Arctic Cat, essentially Arctic Cat supplying the chassis, Yamaha supplying the motor. Under its hood lies a 998cc three-cylinder four-stroke Genesis power plant that features forged pistons and camshafts, triple throttle body induction, and of course, a liquid-cooled turbo. Horsepower claims for this motor vary greatly, but it's been claimed to have anywhere from 180 to 210 horsepower in stock trim. Skidoo's 850 is a completely different beast. It's a two-stroke with second-generation E-Tech feeding fuel to twin cylinders that displace a total of 849 cc's. Horsepower here is claimed to be around the 165 range. Clearly these two power plants are as different as Fruit Loops and Weedabix, yet they will inevitably be compared because they are, at the moment, the two most powerful engines in the industry. So here's what we think you need to know about them and how they perform before you go throwing your hard-earned green at one versus the other. First, there's a big difference in power delivery. An 852 stroke that shifts out at 7900 RPM is going to be an absolute torque monster, and this one definitely is. Power's meaty down low, and near-perfect clutching thanks to Skidoo's revolutionary P-Drive system keeps it pulling hard. It's also a very light power plant, so power to weight is excellent. On the other hand, a big twin can suffer from excessive vibration, and this one definitely does. It's not enough that you won't enjoy riding it, but it is definitely noticeable. Yamaha's three-cylinder turbo produces power very differently. It pulls good on initial squeeze, but not as hard as the 850. We do have to give big kudos to Yamaha for nearly eliminating turbo lag down low, but if you're comparing the two, the turbo is definitely softer on the bottom end. It's when the RPMs and subsequently the boost begin to rise that things get interesting. The mid-range pull on a Sidewinder is almost a spiritual experience. It pulls and pulls and pulls. It doesn't stop pulling until it runs out of gear. In the mid-range and top end, the Sidewinder puts any other snowmobile engine in history to shame. On the other hand, the Sidewinder's three-cylinder turbo is a bit heavy. Now, the weight is masked very well by an excellent chassis, and power to weight is still off the charts, but that weight is still a factor. So how do we see these two sleds stacking up? The E-Tech is going to pull harder down low, and the turbo is going to pull harder up top. The turbo is a smoother engine package, but the 850 is lighter. Since top speeds can vary so much depending on your location, condition, and even just sled to sled, we're not gonna make any official claims as to which one is actually the fastest. But the characteristics of both should give you an idea of what to expect when you're out on the trail or on the lake. Here's a few more interesting things to think about between these two motors. The Sidewinder Turbo is the first high-performance turbocharged power package that we think is light enough and well-balanced enough in its chassis to be completely capable and rideable on the trail for anyone, anywhere. Previous turbos felt heavier than they actually were, and the truth is they weren't really that nice to ride on the trail. This one is, so take that into consideration. E-Tech is great on gas. Big horsepower requires big fuel. But Skidoo has kept things very reasonable with the E-Tech, which is something to consider if fuel mileage is a big concern for you. Both of these sleds are going to be really fast, but let's be honest here. Is it really that impressive to be the first one down the end of Kevlar Lake? 
anybody can hold the sled wide open and make it go really fast. But being quick in the trees, that's what separates the good riders from the great ones. The Sidewinder is the best turbocharged four-stroke sled we've ever ridden on the lake or in the trees. But there's no denying that the light and nimble G4850 is going to be easier to ride in these same conditions. So, as the old dude told Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade, choose wisely. Snow Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Race inspired, trail proven. There are names in the snowmobiz which conjure up iconic images, iconic reputations, and iconic moments. On this week's episode, we're going to drill down on an iconic snowmobile handle that's been reinvented for model year 2017. It was 1993 when the original Thundercat hit the snow. I remember sampling the sled at the 1993 snowshoot event in West Yellowstone. The sled was so ridiculously powerful, it defied description. Arctic Cat didn't just stun the competition, they literally face slapped every other OEM's big bore effort that year. The sled was outrageously fast, to the point of shocking everyone who rode it. No one doubted there was 163 horsepower coming from the 900 Suzuki K3 triple. On the pages of Super Tracks International magazine, my brother Kent claimed the Thundercat's 163 horsepower and nearly 100 foot-pounds of torque were virtually identical to the original 265 cubic inch small block Chevy V8. In as much as the T-Cat raised the performance bar and became the original hyper sled, there were some teething issues. Arctic Cat struggled to validate a track capable of living at the 110 mile per hour speeds the T-Cat easily achieved. Arctic Cat Engineering Vice President Roger Skyme did a spring of 92 Thundercat validation tour in Thompson, Manitoba, where he blew multiple snowmobile tracks to bits. First year T-Cats struggled with track issues and yours truly felt the thunder when I kicked a track out past 100 per down Kevlar Lake. Despite early challenges, the Thundercat enjoyed a solid run into the late 90s, building an iconic reputation as the world's fastest, most powerful snowmobile. The much loved and deeply respected handle was shelved for over a decade until model year 2017, when Arctic Cat unveiled the all new Yamaha powered, turbocharged and intercooled 180 plus horsepower Thundercat. Clearly, you want to know if the new Turbo is worthy of the Thundercat handle. Let's take a closer look. Arctic Cat has been delivering their ZR9000 with a Suzuki Turbo power plant since the mid 00s It has been a formidable rocket and as a result earned a reputation as one of, if not the fastest snowmobiles of the past decade. While the Suzuki has been potent, it cannot be compared to the new Yamaha Turbo. The power produced by the 998 Yamaha Triple is unequaled in the sport at this writing. In fact, word has it the T-Cat Turbo puts out nearly 200 ponies under certain conditions. This report isn't a test ride. We already tested the Thundercat in an earlier episode. What we're talking about here is cachet, reputation, and awesomeness. So is it safe to say the new four-stroke turbocharged Thundercat is deservedly worthy of its handle? The original T-Cat was a 900cc three-cylinder two-stroke belting out 163 ponies. The sled was arguably lighter than the new four-stroke turbo edition and comparing the original's 163 horsepower to the new T-Cat's 180 is probably closer to fair than you might otherwise think. Regardless of whether comparing a 20-year-old icon to a state-of-the-art new millennial T-Cat is credible, we think it's important to say this loud and clear. The Thundercat, in all its glory, has returned. Snow Tracks is sponsored by snowmobileinquebec.com. Experience a ride you'll never forget. Do you know why Skidoo called their first rider forward snowmobile the Rev? because it did revolutionize the entire snowmobile industry. But more than that, it forever changed the benchmark for how a modern snowmobile should handle. Revolutionary? Yeah. But revolutions are, by nature, progressive. They carry on. They change and adapt as things around them change. 
Likewise, Skidoo's rev has continued to change and evolve with the times, getting better and better with each iteration. For 2017, Skidoo has given us the G4, and this latest rev chassis has once again pushed the boundaries of established snowmobile design. And while the entire sled is interesting, there are a few pieces of new technology here that are not just interesting, but in reality, extremely important and likely to change the future of the modern snowmobile yet again. There's no question, the most important new piece of technology found under the hood of the G4 platform is the P-Drive clutch. Why? Why is a set of clutches so important to the snowmobile industry, you're probably asking. I can't put it any better than how Mark described it during a discussion we had the other day. He said, P-Drive dramatically reduces friction inside the CVT, which exponentially increases efficiency, making for a more responsive feeling sled in nearly every condition. Only Mark could make a set of clutches sound that impressive. But it's not just his word I'm going on here. I have first-hand experience with P-Drive, and his description is entirely accurate. So how is this increase in efficiency accomplished? It's actually a pretty simple concept. Instead of the spider fingers sliding on three plastic buttons up and down the torque towers, three bearing-supported wheels now replace the plastic buttons. When upshifting and backshifting, there is literally no friction between the torque tower and the spider. This allows the clutches to operate more efficiently and achieve shift RPM 90% of the time. To put this into context, regular button-style clutches only achieve shift RPM 50% of the time. Because this system is so good and so noticeable, it's something the competition is definitely going to have to develop. Once you've tried it, you definitely don't want to be without it. The second piece of new technology, or in this case, new design that we think is truly revolutionary on the G4 Rev platform, is its integrated tunnel cooler. For decades, tunnel coolers were extruded pieces of aluminum that were either attached to or integrated into the structure of a snowmobile's tunnel. The tunnel on the G4 is different though. Instead of coolant flowing through an extruded piece of aluminum that's attached to the tunnel, the tunnel itself is dual layers and hollow inside. The coolant flows through the tunnel. If you didn't know what you were looking at, you'd almost think this was a tunnel for a fan-cooled sled because you can't see the coolers themselves. Again, why is this bit of design ingenuity so important? Because it's simpler, lighter, and more efficient than the old tunnel design. Instead of looking at tunnel design the way engineers have for decades, the engineers at Skidoo started with a complete blank sheet of paper. They asked themselves not what was the usual way or easiest way of using the tunnel for cooling. They asked themselves what was the best way, and in our mind, this is it, at least for now. The final piece of important new technology found on Skidoo's 2017 G4 chassis is actually related to the motor, but it affects the entire sled. It's called a flat stator, and it allows the motor to be four inches narrower than anything we've ever seen before. Instead of the stator looking like a wheel with the magnets laid out widthwise from the side of the motor, the flat stator is shaped more like a fan with flat blades. A traditional stator is, for lack of a better description, thick. The flat stator, you guessed it, it's flat. Why is this so important? Well, the layout of a snowmobile engine inside its chassis is a very fine balancing act between keeping the sled as narrow as possible, yet still leaving enough room for the engine, stator, recoil, and primary clutch. All this while still trying to keep the mass of the engine as centered in the chassis as possible. We've talked a lot about centralized mass over the years. It was one of the most revolutionary aspects of the original Rev. Up till now, when we talk about centralized mass, we've been focused on front to rear centralization only. With the flat stator, the G4's 850 engine is significantly narrower than other traditional designs and can therefore be more precisely centered inside the chassis. In this way, Skidoo has managed to centralize mass not only front to rear, but also side to side. This makes for a sled that feels planted, stable, easy to maneuver, and very light on its feet, turning either left or right. A new stator design might not seem like a big deal all on its own, but when you consider the implications a narrower engine has on the overall design of a snowmobile and its chassis, it's easy to see why this one change is so important. 
The G4 isn't perfect, no sled is, and we're still waiting for that glorious day when someone out there designs the perfect snowmobile. It hasn't happened yet, but there's no question, thanks to the engineers at Skidoo, we are a few steps closer than we've ever been before. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Snow Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. Awards in this industry are a pretty big thing. Seems like you folks like to know who takes the cake and what's the best of the best. And while for 2017, Skidoo is not the only manufacturer playing in the 174 category, they were first to market for both 174 inch length as well as three inch lug. And that says a lot. Previously, you'd have to spend a lot of dough to make yourself a 174 inch length mountain shredder or even to fit the three inch lug that requires a drop chain case. But Skidoo pushed the limits and brought out the T3. While the color of this rig was love or hate as it quickly became known as the school bus, the reality behind the humor was that this sled would change what the industry looked like in a hurry. For 2017, Polaris has followed suit and brought an RMK to market with the same 174 inch length and three inch lug, which further justifies the fact that there is a corner of the market looking for this size rig. There's a lot of misconceptions about 174 and the three inch lug as well. Most uninformed onlookers say it's for those who can't ride well enough to go places they should become more technically skilled to achieve. And while yes, that is true, it will take an intermediate rider to places other sleds won't allow, what's truer and beautiful about this sled is its ability to take those who are not less skilled, but less able due to weight, age, or strength places their friends go. It truly opens up the mountains for smaller women and older riders to achieve what otherwise was unachievable by them. Now with that said, of course, if you put the 174 three inch in the hands of a skilled mountain rider, it's a whole new game and gives them unprecedented ability to climb higher, longer, and deeper than has ever been conceivable in the past, and makes the champagne powder days insanely rideable. Okay, so now you know what I think of it. The obvious question that's no doubt on your mind is why is this sled not a G4? This G4 design has been in the works for years and it takes time and a lot of money to get product to market. So for this year, the 74 is in the XM close. Do I know if it'll be G4 for 2018? No, but I would put money on that being a reality. And you can be sure the 74 three inch with the power of the 850, oh man, that's gonna be crazy. If you want a 74 in 2017, the options, well, they're pretty minimal because the truth is this sled only comes in an X package. You get your choice of all black or in my preferential color, orange crush and white. And man, I love the way this thing looks. Options are electric start for under 500 bucks and that is that. Because the 74 is such a specific sled offering in just an X package makes all the sense in the world. You get the biggest and baddest rig in the lineup with the coolest features offered. Now, when it comes to suspension, there is a lot that I really like and a few things that need to be looked at. What do I like? T-Motion and Flex Edge. They do worlds of good to help hold the XM on its edge and keep it there. With up to 9.5 inches of travel, there's lots to work with. Up front, we have RAS2 geometry, and I like that as well, offering a solid eight inches. But what I'm not sold on is the KYB HPG Plus shocks. I know in the mountains it's a weight thing, but the reality is there is no adjustment on these shocks besides spring preload. And this is an X package. X package has always meant giving the buyer premium suspension, both in the skid and at the skis. And to be honest, I think Polaris is doing a far better job by giving a lightweight remote reservoir piggyback Walker Evans shock with compression adjustability. This is a premium sled and it should have better shock adjustability. I find there to be far more pros than cons when it comes to going 74. Sure, there's some drawbacks in the tight trees, but I think the benefits far outweigh the disadvantages. Putting this in the back of your short box truck or sled deck can be a little humorous because so much of the sled hangs off the back. But besides the obvious length of this long box, it does give you an incredible footprint in the snow. When you're faced with a vertical deep snow start, it won't trench. It lifts and propels you forwards. When you're holding a long side hill line, it tends to stick better because of all of that track. And when you're in need of that extra little bit of climb to get out of a precarious situation, the 74 is your goat. 
Now with all that being said, you need to keep one thing at the forefront of your mind at all times when riding a Summit X-174. And that, without a doubt, is the reality that you are climbing higher, going farther, and making it places that you otherwise would not be able to go. And by that, I mean you will get yourself places you shouldn't be. When you get stuck, it can be kind of a uh, park till spring type stuck. And without a doubt, you'll find yourself in areas of the backcountry that you've never been able to make it to. So be very aware of your surroundings and situation, and the potential of this sled is only limited by you. And just like guns, it's not the machinery that causes error, it's the user. So be smart and pay attention to where you're going. Not that I want to end on a somber note, but the truth is, the Summit X 174 3-inch may just be the most capable mountain sled ever produced. And while I love the fact that it'll take me places that are unimaginable, it will get me places that I shouldn't be. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris. See endless possibilities. Art to Cat. Share our passion. And by Northwest Ontario. What are you doing this weekend? If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.